I'm going to walk you through setting up a drag and drop interaction in Captivate. This interaction is going to have one, two, three drop targets and a whole bunch of what Captivate calls drop sources. So I've already set this up in a color-coded way so you can kind of get what I'm going for here. This is kind of a, a silly example just to walk us through the drag and drop interaction wizard. The idea is that all these people need to go home, so can you please just drag and drop them into their homes? It's color-coded, it's really easy, and hopefully this will make for a really good example to show you how the wizard works in Captivate. All right, so the first thing you have to do in Captivate with your drag and drop is you do have to fully set up your slide. Anything that's going to be part of the drag and drop interaction, it is very much best if you put it on the slide now. And that means, you know, colors, however you want it to look, anything that's going to be a part of it, it needs to be on the slide now. It helps in general if you name your assets. Um, you can select one of your images on screen and rename it to, you know, green house or whatever. It's helpful if you can have these things named in the timeline just for your own sanity, if you have, decide you want to do anything more complicated down the road. But it's not required just to set up a drag and drop. All right, so once this is set up, and I did color code this all really nice and neatly, um, it's time to set the drag and drop interaction. Oh, really quick before I move on, it is really helpful as far as a aesthetically pleasing kind of help if you choose items to drag and drop that have transparent backgrounds. So notice that there's no like white square around this person, for instance, um, since you are going to have your user dragging and dropping these things and it looks ugly if there's like a white background or something funny going on. So I do recommend finding images that are PNGs, which means that they can have transparent backgrounds if you find, you know, something that works well for you. All right, on to the drag and drop. From here, our slide is set up, it's ready to go. I've got it mapped out in my head how I want it to work. Let's head up to Interactions and select Drag and Drop. Here, it kicks us into the Drag and Drop Interaction Wizard. Um, now, if you make any mistakes in this wizard, it's okay, you can go back and try to fix them later on. Uh, but it's best if you get, it, <laughs> you get it right from the beginning. So the first thing it wants us to do in step one of three, I know there's a lot of text up here, it's kind of small, it's hard to read, it's intimidating. What we're going to do is select all the items that belong together. So all the drag sources that belong together. Oh, great, these swims. Oops, I shouldn't have moved those. I already regret it. Um, we can move those again later on. Uh, select all of the drag sources that are going to go to the same place. So this little family of three here, the blue family, they're going to go to the blue house. They all belong together, so I'm going to add them to their own type. Type is like a category. It's another word for category. So everything of this um, type will belong to the same drop targets. That's what it's saying is that you can quickly map them to drop targets later. So all drag sources of this type, the blue family, is gonna become correct answers for the drop target, which will be the blue house, which we'll set up in the next step. So I'm gonna add these to a new type, just call them, let's call them the blue family. Blue family belongs together. There's only one red runner. I'm gonna add that person. I'm just gonna call him the, the red dude. And then I got the dog person, the dog and the person, and they're going to be green dog people. Okay. All right. So I got three types. I've got the blue family, red dude, green dog people. Uh, this is all set up and ready to go. And um, if you need to cancel that type, that little box up here, you can just remove that behavior and uh, it'll take that away for you. So it's easy to put them back in. Um, so if you make a mistake, you can always just hit that little red box and I'll take that uh, type off of them. You can assign them to something else. All right, I'm happy with my drag sources. Remember, these are the things that your user is going to drag. So they are called drag sources here. Let's move on to the drop targets. These are gonna be added <laughs> to types as well. Um, kinda wish there was a little shortcut to make this stuff happy uh, faster. I'm just gonna call that one blue. This one I'm gonna call red. And this one I'm gonna call green. Okay, so drag sources are set up. They're all grouped into types. Um, drag targets are set up. Last step, move on to step three. 
Now it wants us to specify the correct answers by mapping the drag sources to the correct drop targets. So I set up all the types up here of drag sources, but now we have to specify what actually are the correct answers for each of these. So click on each icon, grab that little, I don't know, flow chart icon in the middle of your uh, draw, drag source and drag it to your drop target. And I know it said that the type would automatically become correct answers for um, the drop target. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm going to just cover all my bases and make sure all my correct answers are set up exactly how I want them to be so I have no surprises. Oops, yep, and I might put that one in there as well. Okay, so you can see we've got some stuff that appeared on our slide here. We've got type success text here. We're not able to edit that yet. We can edit that in a moment. And a submit button appeared as well. Um, but I can see visually that everything is set up the way I want it to be. So I'm happy. I'm going to go ahead and click finish. All right, so now you can see this is how my slide looks. Um, I've also got a new tab up here called um, drag and drop. And under the drag and drop tab, you can uh, make design choices related to your drag and drop. So if you don't want the failure caption, if you don't want the success caption, you can uncheck those there. If you want to change these, you just kind of double click them and um, put in the text you want. You got it. You can also style these. Here, of course, under the properties pane, if you want it to be a, a bigger font, if you want it to be a different font, you can do that. Make a couple changes there. All right, that makes me happy. I'm just gonna line those up in the middle. And these are not visible until the drag and drop activity is completed by your user. You'll see the submit button appeared as well. I can put that into the bottom corner. If you want the answers to automatically submit, that can be an option as well. You can just click auto submit correct answers and then you don't have to worry about the submit button. It's up to you. If you wanna include this in a quiz, you can include that in the quiz as well. I don't have any quizzes set up in this project, but um, if you were to add a, um, a quiz question, a batch of quiz question slides, you'll notice drag and drop is not included in the insert questions window, uh, you have to set the drag and drop separately and then include that in the quiz. So you can use this as a quiz question, you just have to set it up separately and make sure you check this button in the back. You can also add undo button, you can add a reset button. I'm a big, big fan of the reset button, uh, especially if you have a complicated um, drag and drop like one of these, where there's just like a lot of moving parts. It's really nice if you can undo uh, whatever you did so they can quickly try again if, you get, if you're not happy, if you drop something in the wrong place, whatever. All right, I'm putting my little people back where I want them to kind of be more neat and tidy. Oops, I'm gonna move the dog over. Sorry, I'm being fussy here and uh, my visual design. Um, it's also infinite attempts, or you can choose the number of attempts. And then there's on success action on failure message. So if, or action, I'm sorry. Uh, so if you want to do a person that fails to maybe revisit some content, you can choose a specific slide for them to jump back to. Um, you can choose what happens when they're successful as well. And there's a couple more options here. Use hand cursors. If you hover over them, the hand cursor will appear. Uh, do you want the drag source to go back to original position or do you just want to leave it where they dropped it? Um, do you want to be able to redrag the drop source? I'm a big fan of that. And as I mentioned, if you realize that you made a mistake or you want to change something, maybe you've added something in that's new to the slide after you already completed the wizard, you can make those fixes. You can add a new answer. You can... Um, make changes to what the drag source is supposed to be. And as I mentioned earlier, this is where it comes really helpful if you did name all of your assets in Captivate. It's usually best practice to name everything, but I was just doing a quick demo for this drag and drop so I didn't name things. Again, if you wanna name your assets, click on whatever you wanna name and then you can change it up here. So this would be like green dude. This could be, you know, green dog. And then if you are in the drag and drop set correct answers panel, it makes your life a little bit easier if you can see the names of these things in the in the back here. And I actually realize these are actually set to type, so it's maybe not so helpful. But if you do want to add a new answer, you can do that here as well. Okay, so that is basically it. Let's go ahead and take a preview of this and make sure it's working the way that I want it to. 
go ahead and hit play. This automatically pauses because there's buttons on screen here. Remember in Captivate, you always have to have a button on screen because the buttons have pauses built into them. Otherwise, it'll just like, you know, scroll on to infinity. Uh, let's give this a shot here. All right, I'm setting the blue family home. Red runner is going home and dog people are going home. I did have this set up to auto submit. It worked. I put all the people in the correct place and you got it. It worked. Um, let's see. I'm going to preview this one more time. We can see what other options we have here. So I did make a choice that in the design options that if you drag someone to the wrong place, you can redrag your dropped sources. So that was one of the options over here, redrag the drop source. So that's nice if you put it in the wrong place, especially if you have a lot of things to drag around, it can get really frustrating. They're like, oh, I have to redo the whole thing because I goofed up here. So I think it's really helpful to have an undo button. It's nice to have a reset button. These are features that I encourage you to um, include. If you don't like the way they look, you can still go down here into properties and style these however you want them to be styled. All right, that's your drag and drop wizard in a nutshell. Just remember to have lots of patience as you go through this and have a really clear idea of how you want your drag and drop to work uh, before you dive into creating this.